always remember copy that access detail. Because if you don't do it at that point in time, you will never see it again. And you have to create another user to be able to do it. For those of you who take. Uh, I'm sorry, on my laptop. Any changes to be made. So here is our application. Uh, we have a here that this is an app, apparently security that I just mentioned, uh, but more importantly, the CIS benchmark has a AWS security benchmark, uh, which <coughs> you should take a look at. Okay, well, I'll just finish. So to conclude, make security easy for everyone. So as you move to AWS, there's going to be a lot of concern around how you, you know, secure it. If you can start using services that just automate a lot of the security as I, as I demonstrated, or use things like, you know, button click encryption, it really takes the burden off your development team. Uh, and then Look at the top line. It's called Security Fundamentals on AWS and it's a free online course. It takes about four hours, but it does go through a lot of the services that I've just discussed. So uh, please take a look at the security description. You turn on you know, all of your security group. But then what happens if six months later your developers have started changing things or you know um, they haven't um, adhered to the controls and rules that you set up and start? How many weeks, months, you know, while they exfiltrate your data? And then how do you respond to that when an attack has been in your me? Can I continue using this, the, the appliances that I have on premise in AWS? And the answer is yes, provided that they have a appliance in our marketplace. So, you know, big projects like uh, F5, Fortigate, Checkpoint, Palo Alto, Trend Micro Deep Security, they all have re uh, re platform virtualized instances and they allow their appliances within AWS. So, if you're comfortable using those and you want to continue using them to supplement like SQL detection, cross site scripting attack, you can actually write custom plugins for it, feed it IP addresses. So as I mentioned earlier, from your SSH brute force um, alarm, you can automatically take the source IP. So I can actually start monitoring for reject packets that show me that my security group is trying to incoming traffic, but someone's making an attempt to do that. The VPC flow logs are a great service for you to start. Traffic comes into AWS, it runs through the AWS shield components. If we detect malicious traffic at layer 3, layer 4, so Figured it and it has 100 TCP ports open, so Telnet, FTP, SSH, you know, uh, Squid Proxy, a whole bunch of other stuff. Virtual private cloud, it's one of the first things that you are required to do when you come to AWS. Um, but basically, it's a dedicated section of the cloud just for you as a customer. It's entirely private. Uh, so once you uh, if you're on that, you can it. So, so far, we've discussed KMS, it's fully managed by AWS, nothing for you to do apart from tick the box. Great service, one dollar a month per key. So just to show how like the cost difference is there, you start looking at having your own hardware where your data will live. You can see there around halfway down, there's an encrypt this volume option. Just by selecting that box, PMS will go ahead and perform the ES256 encryption volume, you know, industry standards with voucher. So the login service that I mentioned uh, previously. So any encrypt operations or decrypt operations, where anyone creates a key, deletes a key, or takes a key, red line of threshold is on one. That's because if anyone uses it any time, so even just once, I want to know about it straight away. So if someone manages to access my group credentials, log into my AWS environment, I will immediately get an alarm sent to my email address. Likewise, the security, you know, 100 users, you assign them into different groups and roles. Now, before you, leave, you even launch that bunch of servers and databases, there's an element of login that you want to turn on before you actually let the users start doing it. So these are two services. AWS CloudTrail is our service that logs absolutely everything that happens in your account. So every time someone clicks on a button via the console, every time someone makes an API service called AWS IAM, uh, which is very simple, it allows you to create users. Users can be assigned to groups, and groups can have your own permissions. So to give you an example, you might want to figure out around what we do internally. Uh, it's available every six months, and you can download it directly from the AWS console once you log in. About nine months ago, we released a new service called Artifact. It's open. It's the SOC 2 report. So, we, you know, there are many more on the screen, but if you're going to, you know, go away from here and read one report, it's a SOC 2 report. Um, it's not specific to cloud computing, for those of you that don't know. Any organization can go out and get a SOC 2 report. <coughs> and you can have if you're start your AWS journey or, you you know, maybe you have to move to single nature, that sort of frequency just isn't good enough anymore. And you need to start thinking about how to embed security into your software development life cycle as part of continuous integration and continuous delivery practice. Uh, those domains are identity and access management. So if we just take a second to think about this. So, uh, you see, let me tell you one of the advantages of going with AWS for SAP. So if you know, imagine this customer. They went on-prem, where they all be bought the servers. They want to spend 
upfront capital investment on it. They wanted a scalable and operational uh, OPEX model that they needed, and they needed zero downtime. So I will tell how we managed to pull this off. So for I will discuss the case study. For Microsoft, so we have been doing Microsoft workloads for a long time now. So we have gone through all the services, tedious process that we have to go through. Imagine on cloud. It's just we have to run a cloud formation template. It will have the infrastructure and it will go and deploy within 10-15 minutes. And within I'm not doing a batch process because we the editors and those who are working actually on the news collect information then and there. We'll see how many people are actually accessing it, what's the interest that they are seeing, waiting a news article and things like that. 